we're gonna I do want to I do want to stress the fact that um you know we always hear this how do y'all find y'all guests right you mm-hmm. know what I mean a lot of the guests that y'all have seen have contacted us directly and said these words verbatim y'all need y'all need intelligent women like me on the show right so we have a we have a we we have an open door policy okay pull up on the show like you know what i'm saying show us you're the better yeah you you say you're different you know what i mean and a lot of times i think sometimes when you have conversations with these women the more the deeper you get into the conversations the more the same rhetoric starts to eventually come out you know what Mm -hmm. i mean so you oh niggas ain't shit or a man gotta do this but i thought you were different from the women like you sound like you literally sound like every other woman that's on the show and um, like I said, we do have open door policy. We don't vet um, women, and I don't believe we should. And I think the people saying that we do need to vet women, I think that says more about the women coalition than it does about us. Like, if you feel like you're not comfortable with the quality of women that's available, that we need to vet women out or have some type of questionnaire to bring that, I think y'all need to be more concerned about the women in, in general instead of just worrying about, oh, who y'all bringing on the show? Like, you know what I mean? So, like I said, it is what it is. So, um, All right, welcome back to another episode of what we call this the bro bro chat, right? Yeah, yeah. This is this is new to us, so we we try to figure it out. But the bro chat, um, I think this series is more dedicated to you know men's topics, you know, mm-hmm. just that old fashioned, you know, how we used to start, how we started this podcast, just talking about just more relatable topics away from the craziness, the the females, the gender war, and all this other good stuff. Um, you know, as always, we got you with us. Uh, you know what I mean? My bro Ace ain't here, so I had to wear the A shirt, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I I, I want to start a new trend. Uh, I ain't wear him wear him on my shirt because he's dead or alive. It's because I believe in what he said. So I had a bar, but I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I, thought, so, I, thought yeah, you, yeah. I thought the bar was in there, but then it was just... Yeah, yeah it, just, it just faded away. But yeah, but shout out to my bro Ace. He ain't here, man, you know what I'm saying? Mm. He asked without no veneers, you know what I'm saying? They go to bar for you <laughs> And fill it in for Ace, man. We got... Big bro, man. I know y'all be hearing us on behind the scenes talk about big bro. Big bro been on the show before, but he back on the show, man. Here to bless the audience, man. Let, well, I don't know if you want them to follow you, but you know, it's no. Uh, nice to meet you guys. I'm big bro. It's <laughs> gonna pop up, big bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, um, before we get into these topics, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if y'all not already subscribed. Um, join us on this journey, man. We starting a lot of different series on this um this platform. Um, you know, we take a feedback, we read all the comments. So if y'all got any comments, uh, we definitely going to take time out to read them, and even feature them on the show. So, um, this first topic that I want to get into, um, the other day I was, I was watching a movie and, um, it was a remake of, a, of an older movie mm-hmm. and it made me start to think about entertainment in general. And, um, it made me think like, yo, there, there's no creativity in entertainment anymore. Right. So whether it's with the video game medium you see a lot of remakes, you know what I mean? There's no new IPs. It's just, you know what? Let me just remake this game over. Or even mm-hmm. with movies, you know what? It's nostalgic. Let me that's just, exactly what I was going to say. Nostalgia is what sells it. Even the music, like, you know what I mean? There's no original music. It's just, you know, oh, let's remake this song over. So I want to ask y'all, do y'all think, you know, there's a lack of creativity in this era or this generation, like, when it comes to media? To be honest, like, with music, I feel like every few years it kind of gets recycled a bit because it, it, it's a part of culture to look back and you know try to you know recapture what was a you know a moment for some a, a lot of mo- a lot of artists they try to recapture something that th- their predecessor or somebody that they looked up to did so i feel like that's where it's coming from more of a o- o- like a homage to them but not really like a lack of creativity because i do feel like a lot of artists are like you could tell that they're they have their own style but you know they 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 look up to something so mm-hmm. they're gonna you know try to have something to relate to their 
Cause, cause even with y'all, like y'all are, you know, probably the most fashionable people I know, but even if you look at fashion now, we're going back to the overly baggy clothes. Like, you know what I mean? That's how mm -hmm. we used to dress. Like, you know what I'm saying? So changes again, every, like every couple of years. And you know what I mean? So changes every couple of years. What's your fun. thoughts? I, I, I'm not going back to baggy. That's one thing I'm, I know for sure. Maybe a, a loose shirt or something, but I ain't wearing no my jeans. Yeah. Looking like parachutes and shit. That, that was a good on that. Time. I don't know what we were thinking. Like, was... <laughs> but um, I actually think it's like a 50 50 thing. I think, um, I don't think it's a lack of creativity. I mean, we got niggas out here doing new body yada yada dances. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they always say, though, if they always say those dances, oh, we used to, what our parents used to always do, we used to we, do that back Oh, yeah, we, we, we called it the twist. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? That ain't nothing new. That's the nah, form of this dance. Like. Nah, it's true, because even the Bobby Schmurder dance, whatever that shit is called, that was the ditty. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was just recycled in a new. Yeah, I mean, I guess, to a certain extent. Um, but you know, I don't know if the world is ready for something new, you know, what's old already worked for society. So why not continue to do what you think is going to be favorable for you? Like, even like with music, the reason why people would use an old sample is because your mind already remembers that sound. Mm -hmm. So it's already a remembrance of it. So it's easier for you to enjoy it just from that sound, that beat, that instrumental, that, that hook. That cadence, you followed it before, so it's gonna be easy for you to sing along. I mean, it's all a a, a swindle, but um, I don't think it's a lack of creativity. You still like, gotta how many create. Times you in the club and the DJ plays like a a beat to a song that you think is about to be one song, and it, oh yeah, that's a fact. Another. Like yeah, yeah. it makes you hype just because, like, oh yeah, that I'm reckoning, and then it end up being something different. So that's true. I think um, I think there is starting to be more of a lack of creativity. I think people are scared to push the envelope because you're scared to fail. You know what I mean? So it's like, damn, why well, push a new IP out, you know, when I don't know if it's going to be received the best. You know what I mean? When I could go to something that already has a track record of being successful. It's like, okay, let me just remake this or redo this. It already has that track But you record. think they have con creative control. That That's two different things. Okay. Creative control plays the aspect. Where they say, like, uh, the people that pick the Oscars and the Grammys is usually, like, these people that's, like, 80, 90 years old in the office yeah. who can't relate to what a Rihanna is or a Chris Brown is. Mm -hmm. They still stuck on, you know... Cher. Cher and, yeah, all these other old people. And they pick who they think their grandkids might like. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So we don't control the narrative of what we portray as creativity because somebody else is upstairs saying... No, I wanted to sound like how Diddy said it. Mm -hmm. Damn, wrong name to use right now, but you know what I mean? You gotta believe that I like <laughs> said it. Like, <laughs> and like, yeah. Take now, that. That, that, that's a fair point. You know what I mean? It's just like, again, when I look at the specific mediums, whether it's movies, music, yeah. video games, it does seem like people are scared to take that gamble because they don't want to fail. You know what I mean? And this goes back to another what I want to segue into. <laughs> something. Oh, this thing like over there. He like, look like he on shrooms. Exactly. Like, nah, it's, it's a blind that keep bothering me. This, this, I want to go back to this because this was, I think to me, this was a special era, right? When we talk about technology, mm -hmm. I think, you know, specifically when it comes to phone, and I'm, I'm going to talk about one specific company. Apple has very been, has been very stagnant when it comes to innovation. You know what I mean? Um, one thing I will give Samsung is that they are, you know, they're not afraid to push that envelope or try something new. Like, mm -hmm. They got the, the foldable phones and stuff like that. Apple has been, this motherfucking phone has been the same for fucking like 10 of iPhones now. Like, you know what I mean? So I want to go back to a different time, the, the sidekick, you know what I mean? The BBM, the Blackberry side, the, that, that era. Cause to me, I think that was some of the most innovative times in phone technology. And I don't know how many, that sidekick era was different. That aim era, that BBM era, the was wing, different. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I don't know if any era in technology, as far as phone technology is going to top that, Sidekick Aaron. I don't know if y'all could if y'all had sidekicks or BB. Hell yeah. What was y'all experience like when y'all had those 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 phones? To be honest, like i okay, I get what you're saying. They feel they just seemed like uh like so innovative because they had screens that flipped out and all that other type of stuff. But I honestly feel like the iPhone don't need to change much. <laughs> like don't don't why everybody what the what what you, you need innovation. Innovation, yes. So would we like to have a holographic screen or something someday? Yes. But we also gotta keep in mind that 
certain technologies in certain people's hands is used is used differently than we 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 think. Like not everybody's mind is just be like, oh yeah, I want to be the tech guy. Everybody, some somebody's mind is like, oh, let's use this See, in and, a and criminal way. Big bro's or, a big bro. You part of the problem because yeah. you don't request these companies to be innovative. You like you perfectly fine with buying the same phone every no, year. Like you know, what I'm that, that's where you are wrong. Jermaine is on an iPhone 12 still, and I am not ashamed to say it. If my phone is working, it will be used. Mm -hmm. So people that feel like they need a new phone every year just for the sake of saying they got something new, mm -hmm. that's a y'all issue. But what, do you think you would it's upgrade the most your phone if it didn't look like every other phone? Like, There's no incentive for you to upgrade. It looks like my phone is a 14, yours is a 12. There's really no What's the purpose of a phone? Call. Yeah. You sometimes call text use and use text apps. And and certain, yeah, exactly. Everything that I need to be able to do, I mm -hmm. can do. I, which is why I don't need a new phone until something happens to this one. If they have some great technology attached to it, when I do get a new phone, hey, great. But do yeah, I feel I, like- I do think y'all bring up a good point because that brings in age. Like, you know, Sidekicks was cool when I was 15, 16. Exactly. And picture me- He's on flash. Remember, remember we all, everybody had probably like a Boost Mobile mm -hmm. or, or Nextel, sure. Chirp. The, the, the ringtones come out mad loud. You got the Jeezy play. Yo, hey, Connie, young Jeezy. Like, you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody hear what the fuck you listening to. But um, I don't think I'm I'm sitting here as a 30-year-old. Got that shit. I, first of all, I know you lying because when we seen that Galaxy foldable phone, the, the, the fold, the one that come out and look like it's like, a, it's like two iPhones put together, when you seen it, you said, damn, even you say, yo, that shit kind of fire. Oh, you know no, don't saying? get me wrong. These Apple phones is trash. Uh -huh. Like, I I think it needs... I'm just saying, like, me doing all that, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I, shout out to the BlackBerry. I was just telling Weasel the other day, like, I wish I could still have BlackBerry because I'd rather tech. Like that physical, that physical keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like that. But, um, I mean, we we definitely wasting our money on iPhones. I don't know which one mine mine is. It's pretty old, too, so. I mean, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, true, but I, I think it is on the consumers to force these companies to be more innovative because I don't play, That's I don't, what I don't play Madden. I don't play Madden and I don't play 2K, right? But they re, they literally reiterate the same games every year. You know, and, and if people keep buying it, there's no need for them to put new features in the game. It's like, you're going to still buy it. That's the same thing. Like, you know like, yeah, so, you know, I think it is on some consumers to request these type of change or being like, yo, you know what? If, People are tired with Apple, like, yo, stop buying Apple products. So. Look, look, if, but the least, the bare minimum y'all could do is like the regular updated shit that other phones is doing. I can't even think of one on top of my head right now, but it'd be simple shit like using an app while doing something else and you gotta get a close that, like, come on, bro. Just oh, yeah. let me multitask, multitask motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple, they slack. They know they, they know we could do it. They just <laughs> be in the fucking court waiting for iPhone. X plus two. Listen, I do want to get to this next topic. Um, you know, I think this is something that we was talking about. I'm mm -hmm. in mean, Big Bro, you guys obviously chip in. But you know, the the pressures of having a platform, right? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Cause when we I told you when we first started, there was a freedom that we had that we don't necessarily we can't necessarily enjoy to a certain extent because we have a platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that being said, what are some difficulties that you find with, you know, having a platform and even maintaining a platform that, you know, is something new for you that we didn't experience when we were starting out? Um, I think it's truly unfair um, to how we're, one, how we're portrayed. And I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I'm not mad at it. You get what I'm saying? I'm more disappointed in some of the, the guests more than the people in the comments. It's because we treat everybody with the same amount of respect and after the show we still talking to you the same way and then sometimes you just not the same person once them fucking videos come up once the, the episode drops it's just like that person might be in their feelings or didn't like what they said themselves or i don't know because we don't flip any narratives we don't change any perspective it's going out like we're recording this right now we're not gonna say cut and then go back in we don't write strips we we allow guests to come up with their own topics 
we allow guests to say whatever they want, the freedom. So I just, I think that part, you know, makes me feel a way sometimes, which I shouldn't, I, some people say, oh, you shouldn't give a fuck. But like, I do care because I treat these these people with respect. So I, I want the same shit back. Or I want you to feel the same way you're feeling once this shit come out. I want that to be your energy when you was there. You get what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, that, I, I guess that's it. Yeah. So, big bro, like, you want to outside look at him because, you know, I, I want to dive into that as well. You know, do you think that people with a platform has a certain responsibility when it comes to oh, what type of content they put, portray or whatever their case is like? What's your thoughts on that whole narrative? And for the people's sake, play devil's advocate like you always like to do. Well, per personally, honestly, like I, I feel like when you're on any public platform, you're putting yourself up for scrutiny. So, you know, you have to take the good with the bad, but, uh, a lot. Okay. For one, yes, it is for entertainment value, but whenever people get in front of a camera, a lot of people like to act differently. So that is a part of why when they come on the show, they're, you know, they, 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 in high, they, they got high energy. They, they think that they know everything and what they say they standing on, blah, blah, blah. But then they put thought to what they say after, afterward. And it's like, wait, was I really just pumping up for camera? Like you got to, was I, or was I speaking my truth? And if you speak your truth, you can, why are you mad about what everybody else is saying? Because literally it's like high school. Everybody's going to judge you about something. So you be you and you happy with you move on. That's it. Um. I agree. Yeah, I, I think um, letting people in the comments make you feel like, oh, wait, wait I, I now I look stupid, so I gotta be upset and this and this and that. You are hurting yourself because you had no feelings about that, like, or for it. So why why is this a problem now? Yeah, I, I think um, I do understand that you know people with platforms should have a level of accountability there. Like, right? I'm not saying for you to have. 10 million followers and then have some hateful rhetoric and just be like, oh, that, you know what I'm saying? Just to spew that. I think that you do have to be mindful, but I think with us specifically, I think it is a bit unfair. Um, you know, I see people in the comments sometimes they be like, oh, y'all supposed to, um, y'all supposed to be helping the community. And you know, I'm like, I don't think that was ever our mission statement. Not saying we don't want to do that, but mm -hmm. I don't think we ever came out in the beginning and said, you know what, this is a podcast about, specifically trying to better the, the community like yes we have aspects where we have a conversation that we think uh, is needed in our community but it's not something that we should be held to a certain standard like oh this is what y'all said y'all was going to y'all not y'all deviating from that that's not what we we came on here to talk about regular everyday relatable conversations that anybody could talk about you don't mm -hmm. need a phd you don't need to get vetted you don't need an interview we, these are just regular conversations that you normally would have amongst your peers or your, or your friends family whatever the case is so these are not no rocket science questions. Like these are regular questions. Our guests are are prepared well in advance. Um, a lot of the topics is the topic that they want to talk about. So you know it is a bit unfair, especially you know I'm not even gonna talk about one situation we had, but you know when people come on our show and they say the things that they mouth free willingly, you know what I mean? Um, not under any influence because people say, oh yeah, yeah, be getting them. No, they they're very sober when they on the show. Like you know what I mean? And then after the show. No, we laughing, ha ha, he he, slap on the knee. Get the members, you'll see how high. You'll it. see, and then again, once the comments hit, it's always a different level of. It's not the same energy, you know what I mean? Now they feel some type of way that we even posted it up. Oh, You're now. bashing women. How you many all... times we heard that? Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like for... that's the thing. We create the the platform was created to have a space face, a uh, safe space for men to talk about like things. We we, we, we there's a divide clearly, so we wanna. Feel, we, we want to feel like our voice is being heard because, you know, once we start speaking up about, oh, how a man feels, how a man feels, like the narrative always gets changed to like, you know, the sassiness and stuff like that. The, the reason that women were brought on to our show, because originally it was just me, Eli, Ace. And the reason why women were originally put on there was because we wanted women to voice themselves so it wouldn't sound misogynistic or we didn't hear a woman's point of view or perspective. So we wanted to uh, even out the playing field on 
certain stuff that we might have felt or maybe even learned some stuff, but you know, with our, with our natural personalities, you know, I'm comical, Eli's comical, Ace is comical, big bro, you know, our personality is still involved with it. You get what I'm saying? But sometimes we might drop a gem on how to be a better person. Sometimes we might say some stupid shit that you might say, damn, this is, I said some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's us. And I'm willing to take any criticism from what I said. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't flipping nobody words. Yeah, yeah. And I think we got to allow men to be able to have opinions without it being looked at as bashing. Exactly. Like, just because I don't agree with you and you happen to be a woman doesn't mean I'm bashing you. I mean, exactly. We just have a difference of opinions, and that's okay. Like, the you know narrative I mean? usually gets slipped to, like, oh, yeah, the, the bashing thing and the sassiness thing because, like... The, it, I feel like it's hard to accept that men should have a, a like a, a, a almost not not just a, saying okay because a lot of people think that oh yeah it's a man's world we get to do whatever we want everything goes by how we we I feel like in this generation it's like men have to like only agree with what what women say exactly and censor ourselves so that we're not coming off aggressive or whatever the case may be. There's no safe space for, for us to be like, okay, this is a problem for me, whether somebody is going to feel like, okay, you could feel a way about the, the, the way that I, I, I'm, I'm, I have a problem with something, but it's like, okay, should I not express that I have a problem mm -hmm. so that maybe I, maybe I, I my, maybe my problem is my problem and I need to grow from it. Yeah. You, people need to be able to express themselves at yeah. the end of the day. And like I said, we, we, we've never had any guests ever say that they felt disrespected on the show or like you know what I mean they didn't enjoy their time on the show every guest that we had to enjoy the time they want to come back part two and all that others like you know no guest can ever say um with a uh, a conscious heart that we disrespected them or they felt disrespected so I, I think that you know sometimes it can be of it but it comes with the territory so there's uh, one more thing too to y'all hypocritical people that's in the comments that swear up and down when we have if you watch the episodes or you see clips, you only in the comments for something negative. You all, oh, y'all need to be talking about this. Oh, y'all need to be talking about that. And when those conversations are had or said or, or, or there for you to view, you're not part of that conversation. And then you want to say, oh, well, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. Where are you at? When, when, uh, we, 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 we have numerous episodes where, everything is not all argumentative or a debate. You're not there. We had married couple. A lot of people like to say, oh, y'all have younger women on there. We have older women on there. Some of the young women say smart stuff. Some of the young women say dumb shit, just like the older women. Some of them say some smart shit. Some of them say, even we have said some dumb shit before that nobody may have agree, agree with. So it's a, it just, I don't know, man. Y'all, Stop being hypocrites. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we just had to, you know, had to get that off our chest. Yeah, right? I had to get but that shit off. Speaking of, you know, um, explaining yourself, because, mm -hmm. you know, last couple of weeks, Drew, I ain't gonna hold you. You know what I mean? You've been talking to town. I do want to play a viral clip, you know what I mean? And, and, I, and I want you to, you know, talk about the, the, the comments and the feedback you got on the clip and maybe elaborate on the clip that, you know, people probably see now, they were like, oh, he was angry or whatever. I'm gonna play the clip, okay. you know what I mean? And then we gonna react to it. So. I'm not gonna waste my four, three hours more on my lawn and all my acres of land. Question. I'm gonna pay somebody to do it. Am I less of a man? Question. If I'm paying a chef to cook, am I less of a woman? If I if I value traditional values and you ain't present Traditionally, anything else. Traditionally, a man should know how to change a tire. Women don't, don't wanna watch the kids I no can, more. They oh, want oh, nannies oh, watching oh, the kids. Oh, Women don't oh, wanna oh, cook no more. They want a chef. They want to lay up and get by dildos and, again, and roses and then want the nigga again, to still be paying for everything. And fuck again, out of I here. feel like... Yo, if I'm wild them, y'all, let me... Hold me accountable. That's yeah, all yeah, I need. So, yeah. <laughs> this one was funny because obviously we had multiple uh, outlets, you know, reposted and mm -hmm. a lot of comments, you know what I mean? What did you think, obviously, when you... Did you go through the comment section? And when you did go through the comment section, what was your thoughts? Yo, first of all, if y'all go on these other pages uh, that that's not familiar with the whole context of the situation, um, these messages were saying uh, he got low dick energy, he needs a boyfriend, uh, he's sassy, um, 
a few other little fucking I rebuttal. Know you, you hate your mother. That yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. A, a lot of those. That's a staple. That's a staple. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, it, It's some crazy shit that I don't want to say because y'all might <laughs> use that shit against me. But um, <laughs> um, but ultimately, like, I did I did check it out, but I'm not, like, hovering over, like, damn. Like, I wrote a little few LOLs, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm working on my, um, what they what they call that? Um, When you get back or you... uh. You know what it is, like what is cool? No, what is cool? What is cool? Huh? Nah, it's a word that you want to, but it's gonna sound pause as much. That's oh, why you no, I, I, I can't really remember, but um, like, yeah, but I'm working on my my craft of uh reply with the funny rebuttals, but okay. um, yeah, but for the most part, you know, what I mean, comments is comments, man. You are gonna live your life. These fucking bots out here just talking craziness. So, so if you go redo, let's say we we went back in the time machine, right? Mm -hmm. We did that episode. What would you do differently about that that specific? portion of the episode okay so i see and people don't understand um which i do want to elaborate on i feel like people don't understand that we're doing numerous shows and um we try to keep um content rolling you get what i'm saying so and what played a part which which isn't an excuse at all but i did feel like i was getting overwhelmed with hearing the same shit so I would say I may have been triggered and I, I'm not may have, I was triggered. I was getting frustrated from hearing numerous women uh, say the same thing about just using men. And it was, it was starting to get to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm tired of y'all talking like this shit. Like, and when I say this stuff to women, I don't think I would change anything I would say. I think I would have just changed my delivery and my tone. Um, I think it's ways where you could have these conversations without screaming at the top of your lungs because y your message is not getting delivered because they more uh, reacting to your reaction rather than what you're being, what's being said. So I could have uh, delivered the message uh, a better way, but honestly, I don't think I would change anything I said, you know, honestly, I think, you know, that particular group were, was feeling superior to men and then even asked me, you know, why shouldn't we be superior to men? Because I was like, we shouldn't. We should, you know, value each other. If you watch the episode, you're going to see why I was frustrated. You know what I'm saying? But um, sometimes the um the clips, and uh, shout out to our editors, but <laughs> yeah, sometimes the clips, you understand what people talk about when they say, oh, it's the clickbait and stuff like that. Because if you've seen the, the, follow the previous clips following up to that, you would have had more of a context to it. But yeah. since that episode... And that clip is so old. Sometimes when these media outlets grab that one post mm -hmm. out of a four post, like five post uh, segment, you know, you don't get the the nuances or you don't get the full context of it. So then it just comes up. Why is I he could, yelling? I, yeah, you know I could. I mean? Yeah, I could see that that's even similar to the other the other clip where I was yelling at a uh, cat in a hat. Yeah, 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 you know, they like, oh, he told her to get off. Like I was about to tell her to get out or some shit. Yeah, like, yeah, you got to always follow and. Again, it's the internet, and I'm not. We're not crying. Like you want to go follow them, go watch the preview. <laughs> we, we already know what it is. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying. So you know, so you know, I had to bring that up because I obviously I am passionate. But do, do, all right, let me ask you a quick question. Do you think after a while of doing this, having these conversations, does it play? And you can answer this too, big bro. Does it play an effect on how you see women, even if that's not your reality? Like I have a woman at home. But like, does that like make you question? Like, is this how women think? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't think. Um, me personally, I don't. I don't use this these conversations to paint a picture on all women. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is how all women behave? Like, mm -hmm. I know there's women capable of behaving like that, but I use my discernment um, to be able to filter out women, and I think I've gotten way better at filtering out women and not even tolerating the BS no more. Like I, mm. like, I don't even be caring no more sometimes. And not even in a fucked up way. It's just like, you know what? It is what it is. It's like, that's my mental. I don't stress myself anymore. But, you know, I don't look at women through that whole lens of this stand. All women are this vindictive creatures that's out to use men and take advantage of men. But I, I do know men in real life that are like that. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, because they watch the, they consume this, um, the content and um, they think they know female nature. Like that's what, you know, the concept of red pill is and stuff like that. But um, that to me personally, it, it doesn't affect um, my day-to-day -day life with women. I don't know about big bro. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little traumatized <laughs> by some of the guests on the show, but 
I, I definitely know that there, you know there's good women out there. I don't. I try not to generalize everybody and put everybody in the box because you know there's a few crazy ones out there. But like I can't, I'm, I can't lie and say like I'm, I, I'm just confident in the fact that there's the that quality every, woman that, is there. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it's very, it, it's very <laughs> difficult to like see through women now because there's people that hide, there's women that hide it, their agenda as well. And you know, there's women that you could see through through it. So it, it, it's different, it's difficult to get, yes, but like, uh, like I said, overall, I am a bit traumatized by the women. I do want to, I do want to stress the fact that, um, you know, we always hear this, how do y'all find y'all guests? Right. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, a lot of the guests that y'all have seen have contacted us directly and said, these words verbatim, y'all need y'all need intelligent women like me on the show, right? So exactly. we have a we have a <laughs> we have an open door policy. Okay, pull up on the show, like you know what I'm saying. You show say, us you're the better. Yeah, one. you you say you're different. You know what I mean. And a lot of times, I think sometimes when you have conversations with these women, the more the deeper you get into the conversations, the more the same rhetoric starts to eventually come out. You know what mm -hmm. I mean. So you oh. Niggas ain't shit, or a man got to do this. But I thought you were different from the women. Like you sound like you literally sound like every other woman that's on the show. And um, like I said, we do have open door policy. We don't vet um women, and I don't believe we should. And I think the people saying that we do need to vet women, I think that says more about the women coalition than it does about us. Like if you feel like you're not comfortable with the quality of women that's available, that we need to vet women out. Or have some type of questionnaire to bring that. I think y'all need to be more concerned about the women in, in general instead of just worrying about oh who y'all bringing on the show. Like you know what I mean. So, it, like I said, it is what it is. So, um, getting to this last topic before we get up out of here, I do want to talk about um, Ti's son, um, Michael Irvin's son, um, and specifically about being a parent, providing the best lifestyle possible for your child. For mm. them to still want to be able to correlate to the struggle and feel like they didn't have a silver spoon or feel like they um Ruby Rose was another one who I wasn't aware of who did have a, you know, two family household with two successful, you know, parents. Um, but again in her music she talks like she lives a certain lifestyle that she didn't grow up with. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. obviously Michael Irvin, his son is the same way. Um, I'm not even sure what's going on with TI's son, but it seems like he's, you know, saying that he got it out the mud, he never had a silver spoon. So what do, what do you think it is about, you know, these kids of, you know, particularly six, uh, successful parents or celebrity parents who still want to equate to the struggle of blackness? Sheesh. That's a hard-ass fucking question, bro. Um, I feel like everybody, okay, you know, we know the difference between like the Iggy Azaleas and then uh, uh, a Nicki Minaj or so. So they, f I feel like they feel like they want to relate to the struggle because they know that that's usually the like the person that most other people are gonna re gonna relate to. So I'm gonna be able to have a fan base because I have this struggle. Mm. So they're trying to connect themselves to people that have this struggle and make it seem like they have this struggle, but that's not their life. Mm. Um, I think that is it just. Uh, you know, they fake in the funk so that they could get an audience. That's all it is. I don't think it's just the audience. It's part of who, who they think they should be. Um, you know, they see what praises they probably, they, their family get. They still got relatives and who live that life. And then sometimes you feel the disconnect of, I, um, I watched this shit. What, uh, Ray Donovan, uh, he was like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that show, but uh, he was like this big uh, dude from Boston, Irish gangster kind of dude, and his his son felt like uh, uh, like he he wanted to give up on life. He he felt like it wasn't worth living because he couldn't live up to his father's shoes, and he equated that to being a gangster. So you know these young men, you know. You see in T.I. who's known to be this king or this street dude, and he probably doesn't have any uh, sense of security in himself, you know, it to feel like he wouldn't be a man unless he was appreciated from the world 
that society gives values his father. You know, now people, there's people like Suge Knight who grew up, well, I think his parents is one, one of his parents is a judge and both his parents was like financially good. He grew up in the right neighborhood, but he became that type of guy. That's different. But I think a lot of these people rather feel be pray, live up to what their fa their parent, mother and father was rather than to live a uh, I guess a a good a good life. But what do you say about people like Michael Irvin, his son, or Ruby Rose, whose parents wasn't in that life? They had a good yeah. you know upbringing and still wanting to relate to that struggle. And I, and I think but that's, that's the privilege of privilege because like when you have that and you like you can. You could fake like you struggled without you being without you struggling. That that's that's the privilege of privilege. Only somebody that you know grew up in the mud is gonna be able to know what it is to struggle. So we could tell the difference between the fakes and the real. So I think unfortunately, um, too many people equate blackness to struggle. You know what I mean? Like they don't. That's feel true. Like they're black if they didn't struggle. You know what I mean? Like, there's white struggle too. There's, there's yeah, but you know, every I'm just saying, but yeah, I think everybody got I think in general we we associate getting it out the mud with black and the black experience. You know what I mean? And so when you do have that silver spoon, you, people will my, your friends might oh nigga you got that silver spoon you don't know what it is like the really eat noodles and noodles and that like so you do feel like you're missing out I, on the black experience. I, I used to think like that until I looked that shit on more of a global mindset. Mm. You know. There's people in India, people in Africa who's really ain't eating. You know what I'm saying? You ain't really in the mud. Mm. Y'all niggas think y'all in the mud. Like, y'all not in the mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all mud is like a whole swim pool. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? To uh, these other people. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I I don't know what it is about children that, you know, um, that want to live this, portray this lifestyle. Um, but I can't imagine being a, a father or a parent in you know, working hard to provide the best possible life for my children, only for them to to want to live a certain lifestyle that they didn't grow up with. You know what I mean? And then ultimately end up in jail because of some dumb shit like that. We you know we tend I mean? to do everything backwards. Like I have friends who had parent both parents in the household who just didn't want to listen and always wanted to be outside. Mm. I had no parents in the house and was looking for somebody to call my phone, wonder where the fuck I was at. You get what I'm saying? So I mean I think it's almost with everything where you try to be, you get the opposite, look for the opposite shit, just because you want to know what you're missing. Mm -hmm. I feel like humans look for ways to make their lives more difficult. <laughs> I mean, shit, that's a fact, man. But listen, man, appreciate the conversation, man. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Big bro, we always appreciate you, you know what I mean? But again, if y'all enjoyed the conversation, let us know in the comments. Um, Like, if y'all didn't already like, subscribe. Definitely cop the merch. That's a one on one, by the way. Y'all not gonna be able to get that, but y'all could definitely get this shirt. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Get the merch daily rap crew .co. Join the membership, man. We need y'all to join the membership. We got a lot of, we got a lot of episodes. I promise you, we got a lot of episodes in bulk. We got a lot of behind the scenes. We got mm -hmm. some new series we working on. Um, and then of course I got to do a lot of plugs. I feel like I got to get the plugs out the way. Patreon. I don't be talking about the Patreon. Get that. I ain't gonna front. I'll be low key forget about the Patreon, but y'all yeah, should because we're gonna be up on the Patreon just like we up on the. YouTube membership, we might even do a lot of different exclusive things just for the Patreon only, like, you know what I mean? So we working on that and listen to the podcast audio. That's the last plug I had to say. Podcast audio every Tuesday. We need y'all to listen to that, stream it. I know y'all be waiting for the, the, the video to come out, but we need y'all to listen to the audio because it definitely helps us out, helps us bring more sponsorships or, sorry, it helps us bring sponsorships on the show, like, you know what I mean? Mm. So it definitely helps us out a lot, man. We appreciate y'all and, um, yeah. Make sure y'all like, share, repost, and uh, make sure when y'all get the merch, tag us in a post, man. We gonna repost y'all, you know what I mean? Appreciate all the support. It's a fact. Appreciate y'all, man.